What's going on everybody? Welcome back where we get to watch me do some daily content or watch me do daily content. You watch daily content and then you watch me suffer. And I'm gonna suffer. First of all, attention, this shirt is legit. So let's get started with this workout. We are off in three, two, one, and we are getting it. What are we doing here? We are doing 12 muscle ups, 12 strict deficit handstand push ups at four, it's like four to four and a half inches. 12 dumbbell snatches at 115 pounds, and then that's kind of the mountaintop. Then we're coming back down, 12 deficit strict handstand push-ups, and 12 muscle-ups again. Um, and then, we're resting about five minutes, which I'm not gonna have you watch my five minute rest, that would be totally boring. With like a five minute rest, I'm gonna scoot the camera back, and we are gonna be doing a 30 calorie assault bike, 20 box jump overs at 24 inches with no touching the box, and it's like a big long box, not like a short lateral one. And then 30 calories on the assault back again. So a little gymnastics piece first. We're focusing on, you know, ooh, that was a rough snatch on Andrew's part. A little a gymnastics piece, piece first. We're focusing on grip, shoulder intensity, and then snatching. And then we're going to take a five minute rest and then pretty much just hit lung capacity and leg capacity and see what we're capable of with the lactic threshold. So, uh, did my 12 muscle ups, I'm broken. Um, so for me, uh, I think I've talked about this before, um, is most of the time you've probably seen me do my muscle ups on the rig uh, in my barn, which is like, you know, if you look over there near me, the straps are above me on the rig, kind of on a shrimp trawler. And I mostly do my muscle ups over there during the year. And then when I qualify for the games or when I'm preparing to go to the games or preparing to go to like a regionals or a sanctionals or whatever the case may be, I actually rotate over and start doing my muscle ups on longer straps because you'll find that when you go to a competition like the games or sanctionals this year or regionals in the years past or any even local competition, you usually find that the muscle up straps are usually a bit longer. Um, I prefer, sorry, I'm watching Jake's muscle ups. Uh, he's throwing back before he's locking out. It didn't matter. Uh, anyways, I prefer uh, shorter straps because it allows you to kind of muscle it more, per se, and not really depend on your kip so much so you can have like a faster cycle speed. Um, but of course, um, it's good to practice on longer straps like what we're doing now. So, you know, it's a give and take. There are obviously disadvantages and advantages to longer strap or short straps. I like shorter straps, but I also realize that when I compete, I need to use and get used to using longer straps, which is different because it kind of affects the timing of your kip and you really need to learn how to kip a little bit different on shorter or longer straps. And so it's, it's kind of been a learning process for the past couple weeks for me. All right, so I'm in the middle of my snatches right now. Um, I'm trying something different here. Um, most of the time when I do snatches, dumbbell snatches, and these are power, um, my feet will stay the same level. Like essentially like it's almost like a, a push jerk, right? Like they might spread a little bit, but they're always gonna stay in the same playing field. <laughs> Jake's covering the camera. But here I'm actually trying like a split snatch idea. Um, and actually after this workout, Jake taught me a different way of doing it using this split snatch, which maybe I'll do a different video on that in, in the future. But at a 115 pounds, it's pretty difficult for me to like snatch just like touch and go reps. Um, especially after at the end of what we all done, and especially since I'm gonna have to go back through this workout. And so you'll see that the arm I reached down with, so I think I'm on my left now. Whatever arm I reach down with, that'll be the foot that goes back, right? You'll see the foot snaps back. So it's like I'm, I'm it's almost like I'm split jerking, um, but I'm instead I'm split jerking or, or splitting a dumbbell. It's like a jerk. It's like a, I'm really stumbling across my words. It's like a dumbbell snatch jerk. Yeah, that sounded probably super intelligent. But that's kind of how I'm practicing these and the ability, what it allows me to do is get under the dumbbell. It's the same concept to why you split jerk, right? You split jerk, you can split jerk heavier because you're allowed to get under the bar further. Now, we're not even gonna go into a squat jerk, like that's something completely different, but it's the same concept, right? You're dropping under the bar. The, your ability to drop under the bar further effect allows you to go usually up higher in weight. A push press, you don't drop into the bar, therefore it's somewhat lighter. Then you do a push jerk, and it's usually 30% more than your push press because you can drop underneath it. Now we're looking at a split jerk, and now you can go even more because you can drop further underneath the bar. So it requires less press out or less power to get to the top, right? And so it's the same concept for 
us trying to split jerk or split snatch kind of it's a split snatch actually it's a dumbbell split snatch is what it is us using the dumbbell split snatch that's as exactly what it's doing it's allowing me to get under the dumbbell faster now you might be asking yourself okay if we're trying to get under the dumbbell faster then why don't you just squat snatch it and that's that's a good point like <clears throat> you could do that um a few reasons why i'm not dumbbell squat snatching one my knee and two, because I find that when you squat jerk or just squat for me, squatting in general, I don't, I'm not really, I'm not really capable of like hitting something, like hitting the level I need to hit, like getting it above my head, locking out, and then not finishing the squat. I've always found that I usually finish the squat and end up in the bottom. You know what I'm trying to say? Like I can't like power clean and end up above parallel but very deep. It, it always, I always tend to ride it back down. And so I've found that for me, um, in these circumstances, it's easier for me just to squ split snatch here than it is to squat snatch. Now, if it was a squat snatch, I can squat snatch and I'm capable of it in a workout. But if I was doing a heavier dumbbell, I would prefer to split snatch rather than squat snatch. That's kind of a discussion on that. Um, we're finishing up our 12 muscle ups here. Um, the goal of this was to go and broke the whole thing. Mm. When I first looked at this workout, I thought I could go sub six. Obviously, it was not capable of going sub six. Very close, though. You know, transitions need to be a little bit faster, a little more cleaned up. So, jumping ahead. We're next, on the next workout now. We are off right now. And we are doing 30 calorie assault bike, 30 box jump overs. We're going over the longer end of the box. Um, so, we're going, since we're jumping over a 24 inch box, but we're jumping over the 30 inch portion. And that's why I'm banding them together. And the reason we're banding them together, one, so they don't roll apart. But, you know, safety reasons. Two, because if you tend to hit the box, you know, if you don't use two boxes, then subconsciously your feet go off to the side. And usually if you're in a competition and you have to jump over some kind of obstacle and your feet go on the outside of the obstacle, that's obviously a no rep. So that's essentially why we band boxes together. One, they don't move. They're guaranteed to stay put. And three, because we need them that wide, because now I know I can't jump to the side of the box. I'm just going to jump over the middle of it, and my feet are going to stay over the box. Um, the time cap on the first workout was 10 minutes, and the time cap on the second workout is uh, five minutes, I believe. We're doing a five-minute time cap. So pretty much what we're looking at is, uh, if you look at it from a perspective of how do you break it up in order to guarantee yourself to finish, I can comfortably usually do 20 calories um, on an assault bike in a minute. So therefore, at that same pace, if you extrapolate it, you're looking at 30 calories in a minute and uh, 90 seconds, a minute and 30 seconds, 90 seconds essentially. Um, I was able to do it in a minute. But you have to ask yourself, like, was it smart to go that fast in the assault bike? Maybe not, because if you notice, I sat there and rested for like a solid probably 10 seconds before I started jumping. And the reason for that is mainly because I didn't want to clip the box. Hands down, honestly, I didn't want to hit the box. Jake went before me. So if you watch the first workout, Jake actually went first through the 10-minute one um, and then went into the 5-minute one. And so he actually uh, hit the box. He hammered the bike and then hit the box in the first rep. Didn't trip, but like hit it and was on top of it and then um, had to redo it. And so I decided, you know what? It's probably not super worth it to hammer the bike as much considering the boxing board is gonna really take it out of you. And you can really lose a lot of time in this workout if you box jump over slow. I think people tend to underestimate box jump overs with a no touch. Um, I, I personally love box jump overs. You know, I can touch the box with my feet. But no touch box jump overs really blow. And they really mess with your mind because you can't touch the box here, at least you're trying not to. So, let's see, I finished the bike in a minute. Took about 10, 10, 15 seconds to like get on the box and then got off the box around like 220. So you're looking at like pretty much a minute to do 20 box jump overs, like three seconds a rep, which is pretty solid. Like I'm probably not gonna go any faster considering this is a lactic threshold workout. And now I'm trying to get this bike done as fast as I can. Um, I think I got on the bike at, crap, I should look at my time, like 2.30 maybe? And so the goal of this workout would be to match your first bike time to your second bike time. Now, I, you shouldn't match it so much that, it shouldn't match so much that, you know, it shouldn't match the opposite direction where like you, the first bike was super, super, was, you know, maybe like two minutes and your second bike was a lot faster. Like you want, 
your second bike to probably be slower because you want to push the first bike. You know what I'm trying to say? Like it shouldn't be like first bike was this time and then second bike was a lot faster. Okay, maybe you should have pushed the first bike faster. And so that's you know something you probably need to think about. So I should be finishing up pretty quickly. Um, solid workout, uh, scaling options for this workout obviously are as follows, like muscle ups, um, drop the reps, or do maybe ring dips and pull ups. Um, strict handstand push ups, you can either just do the deficit like we did, or just do regular strict handstand push ups with you know no deficit at all, and that's completely fine. Uh, dumbbell snatch, probably don't own a 115 pound dumbbell, and that's understandable, so maybe just use like 100, and if you don't own that, go to a 70, it's no big deal, and keep the reps the same, it's gonna be a sprint. Right, then we're back to sure can't stand push ups and then back to muscle ups. Uh, for this one, um, for this one, I'm breathing so heavy right now. For this one, aerosol bike, keep it the same probably. Maybe if you're a female, I might do like 25 calories. Um, I really don't know a good, I really don't know the good conversion chart for females and males calories in a assault bike, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I don't know if it's 20 or 25, you girls will probably know. And then box jump overs, if you're a female, probably use 20 inches. Um, and then, you know, probably band the box together for 20 inches. Um, and then, you know, back to the bike should be 20, 25. So appreciate you guys watching. If you want to watch a video like this, uh, one of my latest videos, click here. Other than that, thanks for hanging out. Talk to you guys later. See ya.